A scientist from Duke NUS have discovered a way to prevent common heart diseases from getting worse. Or during the early phases, a gene called WWP2 is blocked to slow the formation of excessive scar tissues on the heart. Joining us is Associate Professor Enrico Pedretto. He's Director of the Centre for Computational Biology. Welcome, Professor. He's also from the Cardiovascular and Met Metabolic Disorders Programme at Duke NUS Medical School. Uh, I'll start with a very simple question, although clearly it was not simple for you and your team. Uh, how did you make this discovery? If I break it down, it's first to identify the right gene and then identifying what you can do to block this gene. Yeah, correct. So we started looking at what happened in the heart when the heart is damaged. For instance, after you have a heart attack and you recover from that, the first thing that happened is that you have a specific cell which is called macrophages, that goes into the infarcted area. And there, this, this cell orchestrates the recovery of the heart, which leads to the formation of the scar. So this is a natural process that occurs in every damaged tissue, including the heart. But the problem in patients with cardiovascular disease, like cardiomyopathy or congenital heart disease, is that this process goes under, um, it is not under control, it goes crazy in a way. And if it's not resolved, the organ can fail and the heart can go to heart failure, essentially. So in, in this context, we discovered the gene that control this process and can be used to delay this process. Well, that, that's amazing that you managed to isolate this gene. Uh, but can you, in layman terms, uh, explain how it causes the scarring and, of course, in turn, why that scarring is so dangerous for our health? So the gene itself doesn't cause the scarring. Mm -hmm. The gene, after you have the scare, mm -hmm. controls the process mm -hmm. that leads to the scare. So it's not a disease, a disease predisposing gene per se, but it's a disease, uh, it's a gene that can be used to ameliorate disease. Why is it important to control the scar? You need to think that one out of in three deaths in Singapore is due to cardiovascular disease. And in particular, it's due to cardiovascular disease that progress to heart failure. So if we can intervene at the early stage of the disease by manipulating this gene therapeutically, mm -hmm. then we can stop or delay the excessive formation of the scar. And therefore, we can uh, provide a better uh, life for the patient. Because when you use the term common heart diseases, or just now you mentioned congenital heart disease, uh, for someone like me, I don't know what a common heart disease is. So what, what would we be looking at in terms of... A For instance, uh, diseases that emerge out mm, as a result of uh, high blood pressure during all your life, or even diabetes, right? They can affect multiple organs, including the heart. So they are common in terms that they are common uh, endpoint of other diseases like diabetes or high blood pressure. And, and there is a, a major risk factor for cardiovascular uh, death all over the world and in Singapore as well. Okay, so. You said you can manipulate the gene therapeutically yeah. uh, earlier. Uh, but how early do you have to start this manipulation? How early is early? Okay, uh, uh, you, maybe do you take that part yeah, first. So, uh, ideally, because yeah. this gene controls the first phase of the, of the response to the disease, the formation of the scar, the, the sooner the better. Uh -huh. So the patients with have early symptoms of heart disease, that for which we know that they can progress to heart failure, at the earliest point we can therapeutically intervene, the better it is, because then we can stop and delay the, the process better. And we are developing therapies based on the discovery on the WWP2 gene that we are still, of course, will take time to, to go to well, the clinic. I, I suppose that lends to the second part of the mm. question, which is uh, this discovery, can it be incorporated uh, in some way into our uh, health regimen, you know, when we go for uh, health checks and, and preventive uh, health checks, you know, uh, can it be really simplified to that level? No, not this one, because the gene is not a hallmark of the mm. disease. The gene can be used for therapeutic application once you have the disease, but it's not able to predict the occurrence of yeah. the disease per se, so yeah. cannot be used for health mm -hmm. screening in this case. Mm. Picking up on your earlier point, you said it goes crazy, essentially. And this sometimes you see even in, say, the way, the way skin heals. You get uh, swollen. Yeah, so yeah, this is, so, is this... So is this, this uh, fi we, technically, this is called fibrotic process. This fibrotic process occurs, for instance, when you have a cut. Mm. This is a naturally occurring process. 
which resolve, like when you have a cut, resolve. But in some cases, if you have a disease like scleroderma or some kidney disease or liver disease or heart disease, this process doesn't resolve. That is a problem because that leads to complication and eventually the failure of the entire organ if it's not controlled. All right. Uh your team also looking at, you mentioned further therapies, so developing yeah. a small molecule inhibitor against WWP2. What does that look like? How soon from the laboratory between then and actually seeing it on the market and actually helping people? What kind of time frame are we looking at? Right, so we, i tell you where we are with that. So we have used uh, artificial intelligence to identify the best molecule that can inhibit the activity of the gene and delay mm. the formation of the scar and the progression to heart failure. We are now at the stage uh, of having uh, uh, about 20 small molecules that are very good candidates for the therapeutic approaches. But my, my group, we do preclinical research. In order to move this to the, uh, to, to, the, to, say, to the patients, we need to go into clinical trial. This is a very long process. For a pharma company, it can take 10 to 15 years to develop a molecule that then become a drug. But here we have already a good starting point, like a target, the gene, and a small molecule. We say that uh, with the right uh, financing, because that's also a factor in this mm -hmm. process, how much funding you have to, to develop this with a pharma company, we can probably provide uh, some effective therapies mm. in 10 years or around that. Well, as you said, your team, well, in a way, hands over to the clinical yeah. phase of, of, yeah. of things, isn't it? So that leaves you free to pursue other things. <laughs> so uh, I'm just wondering, what's next? What's the future plans for your team? Now that you've got this technology, uh, what's your next step? Yeah, so thank you for this question because we have actually making a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the function of this gene in other tissues other than the heart. For instance, the lungs and the kidney. In both of these tissues, you still have a similar problem. You have, when the tissue is damaged, the formation of the scar that is not controlled can lead to the uh, failure of the organ. For instance, in COVID patients, mm. one of the complications is to the lung, and you have the scar in the lung. So we discovered that the gene is also protective in lung fibrosis as well as in kidney fibrosis. So these are the new area of therapeutic development and also research for my group. Oh, thanks so much for joining us this evening, Professor, Associate Professor Enrico Petretto from Duke NUS Medical School. Thank, Thank you, you very much.